Uh, this is the solutions to the 2020 Advanced Mathematics HSC paper. In this first video, we're going to look at the multiple choice. Okay, question one. Which inequality gives the domain of y is equal to the square root of 2x minus 3? So remember, with domain, we're either looking for square roots or denominators. In this case, we have a square root. Underneath the square root has to be positive. So 2x minus 3 can be greater than or equal to 0. There's no problem with it being equal to 0. 2x is greater than or equal to 3. x is greater than or equal to 3 over 2. And that's going to be d. Question 2. The function f of x equals x cubed is transformed to g of x equals x minus 2 or cubed plus 5 by a horizontal translation of 2 units followed by a vertical translation of 5 units. Which row of the table shows the directions of the translations? So we'll start with this one here because this is going to be translated upwards. And so it's not C and it's not D. Now this part here, this is the horizontal translation, can be a little bit tricky. It's a translation to the right. And the way that I teach it is, I'm going to start with the base curve. So this is X cubed. Now I'm going to shift this across to what makes zero. So what makes zero in that bracket is 2, x equals 2. So instead of having zero here, I'm going to move that point over to here. And so we are shifting to the right. So the answer is B. Question three, John recently did a class test in each of the three subjects. Class scores on each test were normally distributed. The table shows the subjects and John's scores as well as the mean and standard deviation of the class scores on each test. So we've got French, commerce and music. Relative to the rest of the class, which row of the table shows John's strongest subject and his weakest subject? So we want to standardise these. And our formula that we're going to use is our Z score is equal to our score, which is X, take away the mean divided by the standard deviation. All right, so let's start off with French. His score is 82. We're taking off 70 and we're dividing by 8. If I just do that really quickly on the calculator, I'm getting 12 divided by 8. Probably don't need to use the calculator. is 1.5. And then we're going to need to do that for the other two subjects as well. So commerce, so I'll just do a little C there for commerce, is going to be 80 take away the mean divided by 5. So 80 take away 65. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So he's done extremely well in commerce. He's three standard deviations above the mean. And then finally for music, it is 74 take away 50 divided by 12. 74 take 50 is 24 divided by 12 is 2. And so his strongest subject is commerce, three standard deviations above the mean. And his weakest subject is French. 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So which one is that one? That is A. Question four. What is the integral of e plus e to the 3x dx? Love this question. A lot of people are going to get this wrong because what is the integral of e? Well, e is just a number. It's 2.718 blah, blah, blah. It's like integrating a constant. What happens when we integrate a constant? What happens when we integrate, say, 2? We get 2x. So if we integrate e, we're going to get ex like here or here. It's not c. It's not d. Now we need to integrate this. OK, the integral of e to the 3x is e to the 3x divided by the derivative of the second function, which is 3. And we need to add our constant, and we'll add on our ex. And our answer is B. Question five, which of the following could represent the graph of y equals negative x squared plus bx plus one? And B is a positive number. All right, the first thing I know is that it's not going to be A or B. Do you know why? Because this negative in front of the x squared is telling me that it is concave down. So that's good, we're down to 50-50, but is it going to have its turning point here or here? So this is lending itself towards the formula x is equal to minus b on 2a, which is the formula for the axis of symmetry. 
If we substitute in what we know, well, it's going to be negative b on two lots of negative 1, we're going to end up with b over 2. And it tells us here that b is a positive number. So our axis of symmetry is x is equal to a positive number, like here. So the answer is c. Question 6. Which interval gives the range of the function y equals 5 plus 2 cos 3x? OK, we've got a number of things going on here. We have got a vertical translation. We have a stretch or dilation in a vertical direction. And here we have got a stretch or dilation in a horizontal direction. This one here, this 3x, is not going to affect the range at all. It'll actually just affect the domain. So we can ignore that one. Right, let's start off by drawing cos as it normally is. It looks like this. It goes between 1 and negative 1. Now this 2 here is going to stretch it to go between 2 and negative 2. And then this 5 is going to shift everything up 5. So I'm going to add 5 here and add 5 here. So it's going to go between 3 and 7, which is B. Question 7. The diagram shows the graph y equals f of x, which is made up of line segments and a semicircle. What is the value of the integral between 0 and 12 of f of x dx. Now we know that this represents the area between the curve and the x-axis, but it can be negative. So this area here, this triangle, is actually going to be equivalent to this area, but opposite in sign, so they will cancel each other out. So all we need to do is find the area of this rectangle and the area of the semicircle. Okay, so the rectangle has a length of 8 and a width of 3, so that's 24. So we can tell straight away that it's going to be either A or B. So let's cross C and D out. And then we need a semicircle here. So we want a half times pi times and R is 2 squared. So that gives us 2 pi. And so the answer is A. Question 8. The graph of y equals f of x is shown. Which of the following inequalities is correct? Now this question is a classic. We had a lot of discussion about this last year when we first saw it. The key to it is drawing this tangent in relatively accurately. We need to see where it cuts the x-axis. But let's start before that with the sign of the derivative. We can see from that tangent that the derivative at 1 is going to be greater than 0. We also know that the y-coordinate at 1 is greater than 0. If we have a look at the concavity, it's concave down, so the second derivative at 1 is less than 0, which is going to knock out C and D. So at least we're down to a 50-50. Now we can see in both of those cases, the second derivative is less than 0, but we've got these two in different orders. So we've got to pick which one it is. All right, have a look at the rise over the run here. So this is f of 1. This part here is 1, and we'll just call this a. So the gradient is going to be equal to f of 1 divided by a plus 1, and a is a positive number. All right, so m in this case is f dashed of 1, and I'm multiplying that by a plus 1 is equal to f of 1, and so therefore this guy here is less than this one here. So which one is it? It's less than it is a. Question 9. Suppose the weight of melons is normally distributed with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. The melon has a weight below the lower quartile of the distribution, but not in the bottom 10%. Which of the following most accurately represents the region in which the weight of this melon lies? Okay, our lower quartile is 25%. So we want a region shaded between 10% up to 25%. Okay, firstly, we can cut out A and B. So if you have a look here, this in between two standard deviations of the mean is 95%. So these two are definitely below 10%. So we're down to C or D. Let's have a look at this here. In between one standard deviation is 68%. And so that makes this part here, between here and here, 34%. Take that away from 50, then I get 50 take 34 is 
All right, we want between 10 and 25. So this cutoff here is 16. So have a look at the difference here. This cutoff here is 16. This one is wrong, so it must be C. Question 10. The graph shows two functions, y equals f of x and y equals g of x. Define h of x to be the composite function f of g of x. How many stationary points does h of x have between 1 and 5? Now, there's probably many different ways you could do this question, but I just did a guess and check approach, which of course is a very valid mathematical strategy. I've just taken the integer values of x, substituted them in to find g of x. So, for example, putting in x equals 1, I'm looking at the lighter colour curved here. g of x is approximately 2. Put 2 in, it's about a half, 0, a half, 2. Substituting them now into f of x, so when I put x equals 2 in, now I'm looking at the darker curve, it's around about 1.5. Putting 0 0.5 in, it's about 2. Putting 0 in, it's about 1.7. And you get the idea. Then I can see that there are actually going to be three turning points. If you think about it, so here we've got, I'm just looking at the heights, 1.5, it goes up to 2 and then down to 1.7, then back up to 2 and then back down again. Now, a lot of people would have just said that's 2, but remember, turning points are maximums and minimums. So I've got 1, 2, 3. Okay, that's the end of the multiple choice. In our next video, we'll look at section 2, booklet 1.